Respiratory distress versus respiratory failure. Do you know the difference? This is 5 Minute Medic, where we help you prepare for your NREMT paramedic exam in five minutes or less. In this video, we're going to cover respiratory distress versus respiratory failure. And this is part two of the airway series. Respiratory conditions are extremely dynamic. Dynamic, isn't it? Which means they can range from minor respiratory conditions to respiratory arrest. Now, these conditions can be acute, they can be chronic, or they could be chronic with an acute exacerbation. When we're talking about respiratory distress, primarily the patients that we see are asthmatic patients, COPD patients, and congestive heart failure patients. Signs and symptoms are dynamic and they can change over time depending on where the patient is in the disease process and how sick they are versus how sick they are getting. Now, the good thing is many patients with respiratory distress only really need comfort care. Comfy. But it's extremely important to know when to provide various interventions like artificial ventilation in order to improve patient outcomes. Now, when we're talking about respiratory failure, inadequate alveolar ventilation is exhibited by a decrease in respiratory rate or an extremely high respiratory rate, a decrease in tidal volume, or a decrease in both respiratory rate tidal volume or an increase in respiratory rate and a decrease in tidal volume. But it's important to note and remember that patients in respiratory failure are extremely ill. It can progress to respiratory distress and eventually cardiac arrest. Now we must be able to recognize the transition of a patient from respiratory distress to respiratory failure. Here are three steps to remember to recognize the transition. So step number one, you want to really watch for any change in presentation where the patient is not getting better. Step number two, you want to keep a close eye on a change in vital signs. Again, that does not indicate the patient is getting better. And step number three, you want to make sure that when you notice these changes that you intervene quickly. So presentation, vital signs, intervene. So what are these changes in presentation and vital signs that we look for in these patients who are in respiratory distress? We make patient contact, we initiate treatment, maybe put on some oxygen. We see that the patients are tachypnic, tachycardic, maybe hypertensive, and they're working really hard to breathe. They have accessory muscle use, retractions, maybe they're pale or cyanotic. So we start to initiate treatment, but ultimately as the call progresses, we notice that the patient is not getting better. So what do we wanna look out for? We wanna look out for a deterioration in mental status, confusion, loss of gag reflex, increased accessory muscle use or retractions, head bobbing, grunting, nasal flaring. And as far as vital signs are concerned, we want to look for a decrease in pulse ox or SpO2, a decrease in heart rate, and a decrease in blood pressure. We want to note if the patient is getting more cyanotic or if we note any signs of hypercarbia. So in the end, if the patient is getting sicker, we need to reevaluate our treatment plan and perhaps we have went down the wrong algorithm for treatment. If the patient has CHF exacerbation and they, the patient appeared to be uh, asthma COPD and we started giving them a nebulizer treatment with albuterol or duoneb, they can get a lot sicker really quick. So reevaluate the treatment plan, decide whether or not you need to change and go down another path for your treatment. If you don't think you can change and go down another path with your treatment, determine whether or not you need to elevate your treatment to the next level. If you're given NEB treatments, consider maybe CPAP for an asthmatic or COPD. If you're using CPAP and the patient's mental status is changing and they're more somnolent, consider if you need to do positive pressure ventilations with a BVM. And if you're doing BVM ventilations and the patient is not getting better, consider whether or not they need to be intubated. If you can't oxygenate, you can't ventilate, and there's a poor anticipated clinical course by continuing to go down the path you're going down, then consider intubating your patient. In the end, being able to determine whether a patient is 
moving along the spectrum of respiratory distress to respiratory failure and being able to intervene quickly will greatly decrease the likelihood of a poor outcome for your patient. If this video was helpful for you, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what kind of videos would help you and subscribe to the channel for more videos.